again. It's Dr. Ken here with you. Uh, we're doing practical 3.2 and we're looking at inductive reactants. So don't forget to do your risk assessment if you're doing this prac in a laboratory somewhere. Um, identify the kinds of hazards you might encounter, what kind of super level, supervision level I should say you're going to need, um, what class of risk, high, medium, low, etc and what control measures you can put in place to try and reduce those risks. So here's our basic circuit. We're simply going to use a variable power supply again, um, either a, an AC and a DC power supply. We're going to be uh, measuring the current to the supply, to the inductor, and we're going to be measuring, obviously, the voltage. Now, you'll notice this is a practical inductor because we've also included the resistance inside the inductor itself. So we're considering this to be a practical inductor. So the inductor I'm using um, is 1,300 millihenries, and uh, the power supply I'm using is around about 27 volts. So here you can see the basic setup. Got a DC power supply, simply connected up to my inductor. And uh, this time to do the measurements, I'm just going to use the inbuilt metering that is actually built into this power supply. So the power supply here um, displays the volts and here it's displaying the current. So I'm just gonna use those to simply do this prac. So here's the first step, nice and simple. We just have to measure the current and the voltage. And you can, um, you can see here, nice clear, 27.3 volts on the display. And our current is running at 0 0.046 of an amp or 460 milliamps. Uh, our next step is to do those similar readings, but this time uh, using an AC power supply. So you can see here that I'll just change my pen. Uh, I'm using a simple uh, 24 volt AC power supply, which is actually putting out more like 27.6 volts. And you can see the current I've got my multimeter now in current mode in series with my inductor, this being my inductor of course, and I'm drawing about 670 milliamps or 0.67 of an amp. So let's have a look at the, uh, at the results I've put into this table. So my supply voltage was 27 volts. Uh, I know what my inductance was at uh, 1,347 to be exact. And I simply calculated my reactance with the formula 2 pi FL for reactance. And that gives me uh, 423 ohms being the reactance of the circuit calculated. But what happened electrically? So in DC, I had a current of 0.46, so I'm going along this row here, and a voltage of 27. If I want to calculate out the DC resistance, simply volts divided by current, giving me about 58 ohms DC. So in actual fact, that's the internal, the internal, resistance of the inductor. So if I put a multimeter on the inductor, I would have measured about 60 ohms of internal resistance. And you can see I've put that's what the characteristic is that this is actually measured. So then we simply changed our circuit and we put an AC supply on. We didn't change the voltage. The voltage was at 27 volts AC. 
and we were drawing about 67 milliamps and again if you put volts divided by current it gives you the impedance or the Z of the circuit and we end up with a Z of 420 ohms was the impedance. The important thing to note here is the reactance of the circuit and the impedance of the circuit are very close to the same. So it demonstrates when you're working with AC in particular into a circuit, the applied voltage divided by the current does tell you the impedance of the circuit. And because it was a purely or a highly reactive circuit or a highly inductive circuit in this particular case, then our AC reactance or impedance does come out very, very close to our calculated reactance. So that's the end of uh, Practical 3.2. I hope you've in enjoyed that little bit of an indicator. And again, I point out that if uh, you're going to do these experiments in your own lab, um, the actual numbers will come out a little bit differently, but the basic principles of how the lab is done uh, won't change.